Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, this is Jen Barnhill with Partners in Promise. I am the Chief Operating Officer, and today I am really excited to join you on a webinar with GAO. And if you don't know um, some, some representatives from GAO, they're here to talk about how to look over um, GAO's website. You know, you might be wondering, we have a, tons of acronyms in this, in this world, so if, if GAO is un familiar to you, um, it is the Government Accountability Office. And what they do, we'll let them kind of speak to that, um, is there's a lot of reports. You might see uh, GAO cited in a study or in a news article. They're all over the military family space. And so I'm thrilled and nerding out a little bit right now to have two, uh, two individuals from GAO come and talk with us today to help us understand how we can walk through a report, um, walk through their website, and really get the most out of all the work that they do to understand our families. So thank you ladies for, for joining and uh, I'll, I'll kick it over to you. Um, uh, first, Sharon, would, would you like to introduce yourself uh, and we'll kind of just get the conversation started from there. Yeah, thanks, Jennifer. Um, so hello, my name is Sharon Silas. I am a director with the healthcare team with the Government Accountability Office. Um, I've been with GAO for about 20 years, and I've been working um, specifically on veterans and military health care issues for the last five years. Thank you so much. And um, Sarah, welcome. Thanks for joining. Hi, thanks. I'm Sarah Kazmarek. I'm a director in our Office of Public Affairs. I have been with the agency for more than 10 years now. And um, I work on lots of communications projects. I work on our website and with our editors and designers and happy to be here. Thank you so much. So, um, and I'll just let, you know, you let you fight it out as to who wants to, to kind of give us a little bit of a background of um, GAO, like what you do, um, either just the, just the big picture of how a military family might encounter GAO and what your, what your role is within um, the government working with Congress and working around military family issues. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and get us started. Um, so the Government Accountability Office is um, basically the watchdog uh, of, of Congress, and um, basically we will conduct audits or reviews of federal programs, so anywhere federal dollars are spent. And so we cover a wide range of issues. You know, as you mentioned, Jennifer, you know, we do DOD, and I had said, you know, I do a Veterans Affairs work, but we also do work you know, around other areas such as education and transportation. Um, so anywhere a federal dollar is going, we're going to be conducted audits and reviews. And the way that we get our work is generated is that we will either be mandated by Congress or requested by um, a congressional committee to conduct a review of a federal program or federal policies uh, around a federal agency. And once we get those requests or that mandate, um, we will take a look at the questions that Congress has asked us to, to address. And um, we will begin thinking about how we can develop a research, basically a research project around those questions. Um, and so we have a very kind of rigid process in terms of the way that we conduct our audits and reviews. So we'll have the questions, we'll do some initial preliminary research to kind of scope and, de and develop our methodology around the questions that we're going to answer. And then we will conduct that audit work, which could be, you know, interviews with officials, looking at, you know, reviewing documentation. Uh, sometimes we do surveys, sometimes we do focus groups, but we use a wide range of methodological approaches. And through that, um, those methods, we will um, collect our information, analyze the data and the information and develop findings around that. And what the end product ends up being if we have some key findings is that we will be making recommendations to the federal agencies to improve their programs in some way. Um, we also sometimes do um, basically recommendations to Congress where we want Congress to kind of consider intervening or uh, providing some guidance to federal programs. Um, and those products at the end can come out as a, we used to call them blue book reports, but everything's online now. So it's just the report online. Um, also, we are sometimes asked to testify on specific topics. So sometimes you'll see on the website, not only reports, but actually um, our testimonies that have in, in written form. Um, and then I believe sometimes we 
they'll do um, kind of shorter versions of reports. They're called correspondence. Um, and so those will be kind of um, reviews that we've done that didn't warrant uh, a full report, but have kind of a shorter documentation of, of our findings. Um, so I think that covers all of it. Did I miss anything, Yeah, I mean, it's a lot. <laughs> I would just add um, that what makes GAO sort of special and unique in this landscape is that all of our work is nonpartisan and fact-based. So that's sort of one of the distinguishing features about us as the watchdog for Congress um, is that we're really putting out information folks can trust. Yeah, yeah that was an important one, Sarah. Thanks for <laughs> that sure one. That. <laughs> Yeah, that's an important point. <laughs> and so it's very much, you know, if I'm hearing correctly, um, you, you are operating with research as your primary, you know, motivator, even though you are a government agency, you are, your purpose is to have unbiased research as in following standard academic practices, it sounds like with, you know, is there anything, um, is that correct? In the, <laughs> is that how you would say it? Well, I guess one of the things that, um, and to get to the important point that I missed and Sarah brought up about being independent and nonpartisan, all of our work is fact-based. So everything that comes out at the end of an R product can be fact-checked. It can be sourced back to um, a discussion with a, a, an official, to a specific documentation. Um, everything, we are so rigorous in terms of um, the information that we put out there. We ensure that it's fact-based that it is objective and that the information that we are putting out there is coming from an independent you know, space. Absolutely, and so I know you said you put information out there. So that kind of leads to our kind of next area where we're how people can access this information. Like once they have, once you've done all this hard work um, and you've you know, kind of published and it's out in the world, folks often will see you know, links to report numbers and, you know, in articles, or they'll see it, you know, shared on social media. Um, I love, is it something we can walk through and understand where folks can go and how they can interpret some of the, you know, some of the work once they do see these links? How can they best understand if they're not necessarily familiar with research, you know, and, and how is the best way they can navigate this site? All right, so I'm going to do a screen share then. Great. And I'll, uh, I'll pull up a specific report, but I was also just going to go over to our homepage. Um, sorry, the Zoom, it was like sitting on top of the bar. Okay. I have uh, at least 15 tabs open at any time, so you're, you're, <laughs> you're looking pretty good in my world. I try to close all the tabs and get rid of some of the background noise. Go. Okay. <laughs> all right, so our main website, it's uh, pretty easy. It's just gao.gov. And um, all of our reports are posted to our website and um, they're free. Anybody can access them right from the homepage. You can scroll down and you'll see the latest stuff. These are all reports that have come out today. You will see the date right there. And um, so I've pulled up a couple of specific ones. Um, this is one on military personnel from 2018. And it's an older one, so it doesn't have a fast fact section, but it does start with the highlights. So that's kind of the results in brief, kind of the quick takeaways of the report. And then as you scroll down, um, you'll see why we did the study. So if you're ever wondering, okay, what are the research questions that GAO looked into? Um, they're always gonna be in this section of it and they're usually have their numbers. Um, there's usually two or three. And then can that'll I, be followed. Can I ask mm -hmm. Sharon and and Cara, uh, Sarah, um, what is the importance of a research question from or you know from from an outsider's perspective? What is you know obviously we know you mentioned that that's where the mandate came from from Congress, but can you kind of like for those who may not understand what the, why that's an important fact to look at? Um, do you have it? Can you give like a little summary of why a research question is important for reviewing the rest of what we're about to see? Sharon, you want to take that one? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the question gives you the reader um, an idea of like what the the focus of the review is going to be. It kind of actually even gives you a little bit of a scope. Um, just even looking at this report, the EFMP program is a huge program, um, and the questions will help the reader hone in on the specific issues that we're going to be looking at as part of this review. 
Perfect. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> All right. That's okay. Thank you. And from there, uh, you'll see if the report has recommendations, those will come next. And it'll always have who is the agency we made the recommendations to, what recommendation did we make, and then what is the current status of the recommendation. Um, and then as things change, if the recommendation closes, this would turn green and you would see that the recommendation would be closed. And then if you want, you can read the full report, all 59 pages of it. And then you'll always have contacts also at the bottom. So the person who signed off on this report, the director was uh, Jackie Nowicki. And then there'll always be a contact for the Office of Public Affairs, um, which is the office where I work. So um, how, if someone is, you know, obviously they, they stumble upon a report, they are fascinated by the work that was done in the findings and they really wanna keep up with, with this. It, you know, I know, you know, obviously, like the government things take change takes a long time right so it's not always instant so how can um you know can can people stay in the loop on various reports that you're doing that are upcoming how do, how do they connect with gao if they're interested in following any an issue that they're they're hoping to understand more so there's a few ways uh they can do that if they're really interested in specific topics one of the nice features of the new website is um, we have all of our information by topic and so we have some here that are featured, um, and then we have an alphabetical listing of everything else. So let's say you're really interested in education. This would be a great page. You could even bookmark it if you like, and you will see it's updated all the time automatically with all the latest content that we have put out related to education. So all the latest reports would be here. Um, any videos that we've done um, would be here as well any podcasts, and then all the recommendations um, from various reports tied to education are here as well, um, all the open ones, and you can see more about those. And then if you wanna dig in even deeper, we have even more specific pages within that, um, like access to quality and safe K through 12 education or college affordability, homelessness, um, and on these web pages, then you'd find even more kind of granular information there. And, and I know you mentioned that there were, you know, contact information. Um, you know, if, if a family is, has a question, is that the appropriate person to contact? If they have a question about the report, would it be that main contact at the bottom? Um, how would you recommend they understand? I mean, obviously organizations like Partners in Promise, we are following issues like this too. So of course you can always reach out um, to organizations that are looking at these reports, but is there, a, how, how do people access, you know, if they have questions, is it, is it really just scrolling down to the bottom and finding out who authored the report? Is that the best way for our families to, to stay connected or to ask questions? They can certainly contact the um, author of the report, which will always be listed at the bottom of the page of the report, or they can also reach out to the Office of Public Affairs. Um, if they're not sure, for example, like, do I really want to ask this person? Just reach out to us. We take all kinds of public inquiries all the time, and that's, we're happy to do it. Great. Um, and if they are interested in, is there, I know that there is a newsletter. I assume that that's something that that, that folks can, can sign up for to get, is it customized or do you get everything? Like, <laughs> how does that work? So um, at the bottom of every page of our site in our footer, you can put in your email address um, to subscribe to our email updates. And then after you've put in your address, you can choose what you want to get. So you can choose, okay, do I want every day to see what Geo is putting out? Um, and that's the today's reports and testimonies email. Um, that's a pretty popular one. So <laughs> you're welcome to sign up for that. Or you can pick a specific topic email. So we do have an education topic email that you could sign up for. Um, I think that there's also one on veterans as well. So you can choose as many of the emails as you like to be signed up for. Um, we're also very active on social media. And so again, in our footer, you can see all the icons for the many channels that we're on. Um, so you can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, especially, you know, if you're looking for the moment reports come out, 
they go on our website the second they come out and then they're tweeted uh, right away as well. Um, and then we have a lot of video content podcasts as well. Well, I love, I love what you've done with the site. I know that this, some of this, these features seem somewhat new. I, I don't, I don't remember, you know, when they came out with the, the update feature, I know that that, uh, as a military family reporter, it, it was thrilling to see. So I, I'm a fan of whoever designed this, this update, which is why we want to share it with our families. Is it fairly new? Um, it is fairly new. I think we've had the site up for at least one year now, um, if not going into our second year. And I will pass your compliments on to our team. <laughs> we had a lot of great folks who worked very hard on getting the new website out. Definitely. And it's I highly recommend um, checking out GAO's website, understanding, you know, now that you can track the issues, someone is there watching and, and you can see it and you can see where the, what the statuses are. Um, I thank you so much for your time. I know we walked through pretty quickly. Uh, is there anything else that we didn't get to cover um, as to how families can access the, the hard work that you've done on these reports or if they have any, um, is there anything else we didn't get to talk about um, or anything else you would like them to know? I just would also put in a plug for the view agencies feature. So um, it's really similar to the view topics where you can just get the absolute latest information that we put out there. So if you want to um, be tracking the Department of Veterans Affairs or Department of Defense, you can click any agency listed here and then you'll get always the recent reports, the videos that we've done, the podcast recommendations, um, and then you can drill into specific uh, topic pages that are related to those agencies as well. And it sounds like, um, you know, when you are reaching out to those agencies, all GAO reports do come with a number, right? So it would be probably important mm -hmm. to note that number. Is, um, and I don't know if we have one. Yeah, there's one. You can see them as you Yeah, I can pull one up here. Yeah. <laughs> they always will have the title at the top, and then they're going to be followed by the report number, and then the date. Um, some of our reports are done as a request for Congress, and then they can hold them for 30 days, which is maybe more detail than you want, but that's why there'll be two dates here. Um, oh. If it was published to Congress and then publicly released following that. And then uh, all of our newer reports will also have the fast facts here, which gets you in 650 characters, everything you need to know about the report. Wow. How does that feel, Sharon, having all of your work condensed into only a few characters? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I know. It's great. Um, the, the power of a good edit <laughs> right there. Well, thank you all for your time. Um, I, Sharon, did you have anything you would like to add about any part of the research process that you want folks to understand or anything else about GAO and, and your work? Um, anything that they should be maybe looking out for that you're working on um, that you'd like to share? Uh, just give you the floor before we say, sign off. Uh, no, I would just encourage, you know, especially for my area, looking at um, both veterans and military health care, like we are constantly putting out new work. Um, and so if you sign up, um, you know, to get the uh, um, the announcements of the new reports, I think that's a good way to kind of stay on top of things because um, we're constantly putting out work, <laughs> constantly putting out reports on really important issues in those areas. Thank you. Sarah, did you have anything else you would like to share before we sign off? Or um, obviously we've covered it a lot. So thank you so much for your time. Um, but I'm just happy to be here and thank you for your interest. All righty, well, thanks everyone for joining um, today. And I really appreciate you taking the, the time to pay attention to data because it, data really matters and it really impacts um, our lives. And if you have any questions, um, I, we can probably uh, link to GAO's site that you can get direct links to the, the newsletter as well um, in, in uh, our comment section. So please um, reach out to us if you have any follow-on questions. But thank you ladies very much for taking the time to talk with us.